Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the repeat function in Excel to display data graphically. I have here in this worksheet fictitious data. And I have 100 records. And I have two variables, an ID number and a score variable. I'm just going to be using the first 18 records because they're visible on the worksheet without having to scroll down. So the REPT function will repeat a character a specified number of times. And we can use this function to display data graphically in many different ways. So the first way I'm going to show you is to simply create horizontal bars out of the vertical line key. So that'll be equal sign, then REPT, parenthesis, the text here will be quotation mark, shift backslash, that's the vertical line key. It's also referred to as the pipe. Then in quotation mark, comma, and the number of times I'll refer back to cell B2, which contains the value 22. So what we'll have here when I hit enter is 22 vertical lines. And if I autofill this down, we can see we have horizontal bars. Now I'm just using the automatic font color, which is black, but you can of course change the font here and have the bars in many different colors depending on what you prefer. Now there are a lot of characters displayed here. If we want something a little more simple that still lets us compare the scores to one another graphically, we can use the REPT function to insert spaces and then a character. So go in and start with equal sign, then REPT. The text, in this case, I'm going to be using a space, so it's going to be quotation mark, space, and then another quotation mark, comma. The number of times will still be this value, 22. Close parentheses, space, and I'm going to use the ampersand, which is shift 7. And then I'll just use an X here, so it'll be quotation mark, capital X, quotation mark. And hit enter. And you can see that you have the 22 spaces, then the X. Now if we autofill this down, we can see that some of these values, like the values in the 70s, fall outside of the column width that we wanted. You see the column width for column D, and the X is displayed a little bit farther to the right than we want. So if we go back to the original function, we can modify this by going to B2 and say dividing by 2. Try that out. So we'll have a space, then number of times will be the value divided by 2. And that's going to move the X closer to the left. And then we autofill this down we can see that all the values are now contained in the column width that we had originally set here. With this type of display, and even with the example I had here before in column C, it might be useful to add lines, borders. I'm going to use all borders, and that makes it a little easier to interpret. For the last example, I'm going to show you how to display the data in blocks based on a specified value. So that when you look at the display, it's easier to tell what the value is. So in column E, I'm going to build this display. And instead of hard coding the value that we want the characters divided by, I'm going to make it dynamic, so I'm going to put it up in cell E1 because I'm not using that cell. So I'm going to start with the value 5. I'm just going to put a 5 up in cell E1 and then move down to E2. So here in cell E2, I'm going to build the function. Now I mentioned before that we're using the 5 up here to make this function dynamic, but it's only partially dynamic the number of actual symbols in the string will have to be changed as you change this value. 
but this will still save time if you're moving back and forth between values for the break in the display. So we'll start this with equal sign, then REPT, parenthesis, the text will be quotation mark, and since we're using five as the value, it's gonna be shift backslash, and it's gonna be five times. Then a space, then quotation mark, comma, and then we're gonna use the integer function as INT, and as you can see from the display it this rounds a number down to the nearest integer so open parentheses you can see it has one argument which is the number and that'll be cell b2 and I'm going to divide this by 5 which is cell e1 and then put in two parentheses I'll just put in a space then ampersand another space and then another repeat function and this one is just going to repeat one of the vertical lines, then a comma, and now I'm going to use the MOD function. As you can see, that returns the remainder after a number is divided by a divisor. So open parentheses, you can see this has two arguments, the number and the divisor. The number is going to be B2, the original value, and the divisor is going to be cell E1. Again, that part is dynamic. And then two parentheses and hit enter. So we can see, because we know these bars come in groups of five, that this is 22. Now, if I attempt to autofill this down, it's going to give me an error because E1 is a relative reference in this function. So if I go back into the function, just go to E1 it only appears twice. Just go to both instances and press F4, function 4, and make that an absolute reference. So it's no longer a relative reference, it's an absolute reference. So as we autofill, it won't change. And we can see we have the displays for the other values. And as you can see, the displays are moving farther to the right than we want. I'm just going to hide C and D, com C and D and make this a bit wider. And then show you how to change this value. So say we want this to these bars to be grouped in groups of 10 instead of five. So this is only partially dynamic. So if I go up here and change the five to a 10, that's not gonna give us the result we want because the number of vertical lines displayed is still five in the function. So I need to go inside this formula, and where we have the five vertical lines, I need to add five more. So it's shift backslash five more times, then hit enter, and again I'll autofill this down. And now we see the bars are displayed in groups of ten instead of groups of five. I hope you found this video and using the REPT function in Excel to display data graphically. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.